Becky and welcome to Brookfield Zoo's Facebook Live bringing the zoo to you and today we thought we'd give you guys an update on how Brutus and Titus are acclimating to the zoo since they've been here a few months now. So Brutus and Titus are behind me, they're the four-year-old males we brought in from Hovel Zoo. Right now they're chewing on some big ice treats we made that have some bison ribs in them uh, and some other meat products in there so there's, they're really enjoying those and they're hoping to cool off a bit uh, in the warmer weather. So if you want to know which one is which, we have a couple ways to tell them apart. And so, let me see which ones they are. So we've got Brutus on the right hand side and Titus on the left hand side. And the way we can tell the difference is if you look straight ahead uh, to Titus on the left, he has a much blonder mane. It's a little bit shorter on the sides, which is a bit hard to see right now. The biggest thing to notice uh, is when they stand up, Titus has a long row of fur all along his abdominal area. So all along his belly, he has a bit of fur. Whereas Brutus only has little patches of fur kind of in his armpits and back by his hips area. And then Brutus on the right has a darker mane and it's a little bit longer um, and a little, it kind of goes over to the side, has a bit of a wave to it. They're about the same size. Um, they're actually, we weighed them this week and they're weighing in at 500 pounds a piece. So they're the biggest big cat that we have on Big Cat Row here at Brookfield Zoo. And they're actually Kruger Eye lions. So they are from the Southern countries in Africa. So they're the largest subspecies of lions is the Kruger Eye lion. So they're pretty big boys. Um, obviously distinctive to males are those big, huge manes. They're also much larger, most females uh, stay around 300 pounds or smaller, although they can be a little bit bigger, especially if they're Kruger Eye females. And so those are the, gen the general way to tell apart between a male and a female size. If you look up at uh, Titus right there, you can actually see the fur I was talking about along his tummy area. And if you look really close and you see those spots all down his legs, a really cool thing about lions is when they're born as cubs, they're actually covered in spots. And then as they get bigger, and they, uh, their fur grows out longer and they get another layer of fur to keep them warm. You actually don't see the spots nearly as much, but you can still usually see them along the legs, but you don't see them on their backs and sides anymore. So that's a kind of cool thing most, thing most people don't know about lions. And so you can see they're quite tall and quite long. So they are about three and a half to four feet at their shoulder length and about 10 feet long. So they're pretty big boys. So since Brutus and Titus have come here, we've really gotten to know these brothers. Um, and their distinct personalities. They're actually a very bonded pair. They were born together and they also have a sister at Hogel Zoo. Their sister's name is Calliope. And so they've been together since birth. Uh, and then a few years ago, they were separated from their mom and cub and they came and then they were managed separately. And then we recently brought them here in March. So what happens in the wild is similar to what we do in zoos is that once the once lions reach adult stage or sub-adult stage around one and a half to two years of age they generally get kicked out of a pride and then what happens is that they travel together a lot of times in bachelor groups of similar aged males for several years until they're able to take over their own pride obviously they're not going to take over their own pride here but they can live together for quite some time and lions are a really cool species and that they're the only big cats that are a social species so they actually live together in huge prides but as most people have seen especially on um like national geographic or something is that prides a lot of times have a lot of related females and then one male that moves between them and takes over different prides and so until they're old enough to take over their own pride these bachelor kids that got kicked out travel together and they hunt cooperatively, similar to when they have a pride with females and males, the females get together and they hunt cooperatively, meaning two or three or four animals will hunt together at the same time and try and take down a really big prey item together instead of each individual animal trying to uh, take down a smaller prey item. And so that's a really cool uh, thing that's different than all the other species that are solitary, like a tiger or a leopard. They hunt alone so they can only um, hunt one small animal at a time to feed on. But because prides are social and they live together and they can hunt cooperatively, they can take down really large animals and they can feed several animals at a time. Another cool feature of lions, similar to other big cats, is that they do something called gorging and fasting. So they take, up, take down a really large prey animal, they eat and eat and eat and eat, and then they take a couple days to digest and they sleep between 18 and 20 hours a day as they digest that. It's actually a very nice evolutionary feature for them because it means 
even if they're not super successful every single day, their body is designed to go periods of time without food, but then also when it's, when it's available, then they have large um, stomachs so they can hold a lot of food at time. That's similar to how lions living in the desert areas, that they can travel to follow the water and they travel to follow the herd. So they're actually designed really well if food is not um, super abundant at that time and it's scarce that they are made to handle that. And so they are used to really hot temperatures. They can handle pretty warm places. If you um, have been to Brookville Dune, you see we actually have a cave on our exhibit. And the cool thing about our cave is that we can actually set a fan up in the summer and we can blow cold air on the lions to cool them off and then keep them in the shade over there where the public can see them really close. But also if you've been here in the winter, you see they like to spend a lot of time there and that's because there's a heater in that cave. We bed it up with some nice bedding, we put a lot and we turn the heater on and then they've got a nice cozy cave that they can live in. You can see the lions are trying to take down this, uh, they're really interested in our bungee pole right now. And so we like to um, stimulate natural behavior here. And so we like to be able to give them the chance or the opportunity to do some hunting behavior like grabbing and pulling like they would do to catch prey. And Titus is uh, checking out our log right there. Um, because they don't uh, share food very nicely, we didn't put anything up there uh, that was meat related or anything um, just to test it out. They are new to these bungee poles. We've tried it a couple times uh, while the zoo's been closed um, and they're very energetic. They jump up pretty darn high and so we're trying to figure out the best way to get them interested in it um, and keep uh, their prey drive going strong by being able to play with large things and to get, keep their muscles going. Um, do we have any questions that we want to ask? Yeah, do they eat anything besides meat? Uh, they do not. They eat strictly meat. Um, they can eat a lot of different kinds of meat. Um, and we give them a lot of bones here as well to chew to keep their dental health really strong. As, as you saw, we have bison ribs uh, coming out of those ice treats, but they do, they do eat only meat. They will eat something really small like a chicken or eggs and things like that, but they'll also eat, like I said, large carcasses uh, and large amounts of meat in one sitting. So how often do you feed them? We actually feed them twice a day here. Um, their diet varies throughout the week, whether it's whole prey or bones or their regular meat diet. Um, so we do give them a lot of variety, but we feed them twice a day and that's actually so that we can train them throughout the day for a lot of things to help take care of them, um, like training them to go into a shoot to get a vaccine injection or just shifting on and off exhibits so we can clean and maintain their habitat. So we do feed twice a day. How much would they eat in a week? Oh, that's a really good question. Well, they get about 10 pounds of food a day right now. So I guess 70 pounds of food in a week. We do vary it throughout the week. Uh, and then we can give treats and extra things. So between 70 and 75 pounds a week is what we feed them in zoos. Based off the fact that they weigh 500 pounds and they're four years old. So they have a really high metabolism. They're very interactive. They're very energetic. They like to cooperatively play with a lot of toys. They like to hunt. They like to stalk. Um, they like to tear things apart uh, quite well. And so being four years old and being that large, they take a lot of food to keep that energy level going. So what are they, uh, what, what kinds of food do they have right now in those ice treats, aside so, from the bison? Uh, there's some meat, chunk meat, and then there's some blood in there from the chunk blood. meat. Nice, okay. What other kinds of enrichment do they get? So they get um, a lot of uh, things that are uh, stimulate natural behavior, like I said. So a lot of them are uh, different sized toys that they can bat around like they would in a chase. Uh, they give, we give them um, things to tear apart. We give them a lot of different beddings, a lot of scents, a lot of spices. If you spray a perfume scent or a cologne in there, it actually mimics the uh, smell of the opposite sex, and so that intrigues them. They like a lot of the sweeter scents, like cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. Most of the big cats like that quite a bit. You can't ever give uh, garlic or onions to big cat species. It's toxic to them. So we do a lot of sweet scents and, and perfumes, but then um, they also like to tear apart boxes um, and just several different shaped toys uh, to, again, try and use those muscles. So now that they've been here for about two months, uh, what kind of personalities are you seeing from them? That's a great question. So this is, uh, so Brutus on the left is a pretty calm guy. He's pretty laid back uh, and mellow, although he does like to uh, 
still destroy quite a lot of things, but he does it a bit on the sly. And then Titus on the right is very energetic, uh, very interested in everything. Um, he likes to check the things out first. He likes to go everywhere first. Um, he's a bit more alpha than Brutus, although um, just because he's more rambunctious doesn't mean he's necessarily more dominant. Um, but they are very bonded. They sleep right next to each other. They generally have some part touching the other. They follow each other around. They like to work together to pull toys out of the pool. Uh, lions are not swimmers like tigers, but they will get in water to cool off if it's hot and they will go in for prey like waterfowl to catch them, but they'll, t they'll play with toys in there as well. So um, Titus is a much more um, gregarious lion. He likes to, um, he generally finds the food first, as you can see, uh, one of the keepers left some snacks up on that um, log and they'll see, he might, he'll find some other, there's some chunk meat um, throughout the exhibit. And Titus is generally one that'll go find that first. Um, and he is much more destructive uh, than Brutus is. How long can they possibly stay together? They technically can stay together their entire lives. They can stay together their whole lives uh, as long as they're still getting along and doing well with each other. Um, because they've always been together their whole lives, they've not been separated and introduced and they know and they're related to each other. They should be able to live together their whole lives. If we ever started to see any sort of um, aggression towards each other or not wanting to be together, we could separate them, but I would assume they lived here their whole lives. So are these the only two lions that we have at Brookfield Zoo right now? These are the only two lions we have at Brookfield Zoo. So right now, the, the thing with lions is that when they live in prides with lots and lots of females and only one or two males in that large group, if you have a litter of cubs that has uh, males and females, the males have to be separated and there's not always a female for them everywhere. And so this is common in the wild. Like I said, bachelor groups hang out all the time. Um, and so we've decided to help the species survival planning uh, committee for lions by actually housing this bachelor group. There's several bachelor pairs throughout the country. And if we can house them here, then other zoos will have the space to breed when they have females. Yeah, I think it's important to note um, that being part of the species survival plan does mean more than just uh, having a, 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 a pair, pair. Yeah, yes. a breeding pair. So we've, um, if you just tuned in a few weeks ago, we had a tiger uh, Facebook Live and we said the same thing that we now, um, we are not breeding tigers here either. And that's because um, we are, we've cho we're chose choosing to house a lot of the animals that need to be placed so that zoos that have a breeding program have the space to breed and have the space to hold cubs for the two to three years that they would be with their mom before they go to their new zoo. And so we are supporting the species survival plan for SSP by housing these males so that Hogel Zoo can breed again. So how long do you lions typically live? So they live to be around 12 to 17 in zoos and around um, up to early 20s, maybe 20 in zoos. They live to be around eight to 12 in the wild, sometimes a few years older. So we can't, we don't quite double it, but we can almost double their life expectancy in zoos. They don't have, um, obviously they're not fighting uh, to maintain prides. They're not fighting for their prey species where they're not gonna get gored by an animal. They have great veterinary care, so there's no issues with parasites. Or if they get, if they do get a wound, they're, it's not gonna get infected. We can treat them. We can keep them really healthy for quite a long time. So do they roar all the time or how often do they roar and for what reasons? So Brutus and Titus do not roar nearly as much as if we were to have a breeding pair. It could be for a lot of reasons. It could be that they're still pretty young. Uh, Titus has a louder roar than Brutus right now, but they both kind of have a bit of a baby roar. They don't have a full blown uh, adult male roar quite yet. It could be they're still getting used to their territory. A lot of times they roar right when they come out on exhibit or right before they go in to be fed or right when they come back out from being fed. So a lot of it is when they enter a different part of their holding or exhibit space and they're talking to one another and letting them know like, hey, I'm out here now, where are you? I'm over here. Um, and so it's a lot of communication between the two of them and a lot of it is about location. Um, they do not have a cooperative roar. Um, if people were here when we had Isis and Zenda, you know, they would take turns roaring and they would talk to each other, one another. They don't quite do that yet. Um, but they do more of the roaring sunrise, sunset, and when they're coming in and out of holding. So we do have a pool they do. out here. How deep is it? That pool is only about three feet deep. Like I said, lions don't 
swim like a tiger. Tiger's the only big cat that swims other than jaguars. So they do like to drink from that. That's their fresh water source. We keep it running so that they have fresh water at all times. They do sometimes dip their feet in to cool off a little bit. And like I said, they'll play together and cooperatively pull toys out of it. But it is generally for their drinking and a little bit of cooling off. Would these lions ever be introduced to the wild or reintroduced? They would not be. So because they've grown up in zoos, they would not know how to hunt to survive in the wild. They're very acclimated to humans. And while we would never go in with them, they're very, very dangerous. They would not know to avoid humans in the wild as well. And so they will never be introduced into the wild. How high can they climb? They can climb quite high uh, and jump quite high, although they jump further horizontally than up and down. They are, they are quite heavy in the back end, so they cannot jump nearly as far as like a leopard, like a snow leopard that can jump 30 feet straight up in there. Obviously, they're too big for that. They can almost jump to the top of these bungee poles. We make sure our exhibit walls are at least 16 feet high, including the kicked back. That, that's the rock, we're done. the rock that is diagonally slanted in knowing they cannot get that high. And so they can probably jump about 10, their back feet can probably get around uh, six to eight feet off the ground, um, but it's not a high jump. They're just so heavy and weighted. It's really cool when lions are young, they learn to climb trees. And a lot of times if you see pictures of lions in the wild, oh, tied to sound yeah. a snack. Uh, if you see them in the wild, they're actually sitting up in the tree trying to get a bit of shade. And those are all pretty young lions around, two to three years of age as they're still small enough to be able to get a, up into a tree and they're light enough to lift their body weight with their front arms. Whereas now they weigh too much to get up that high in a tree or to jump very high. Can you remind us how old they are? They were born on February 24th, 2016. So they just turned four. And is there a reason for that belly fur? That is a really good question. You know, every single um, subspecies of lions has a different main configuration. So based on where they're found in either Africa or India and what country they span and what population they're considered a part of our subspecies. Like I said, they're a Kruger eye lion, so they're in the southern countries. Every lion subspecies has a different kind of mane. So it goes back a different length. It's darker versus lighter, like a Barbary lion has super dark black mane, whereas theirs are a bit lighter, uh, probably based on their habitat. You can see him trying to get that rock out of there that we um, played in it, uh, that we placed in there to see if they would try and pull a toy out. And so um, I'm, sh I'm sure it's because of some sort of protection, but it also is a sign that he is an adult virile male. It's part of their courtship to have a large mane like that. It means they're more alpha. That's probably why he's a little more dominant. He has a little more fur in his mane than Brutus does. Um, but I'm not sure it has an actual feature. I do know the mane does help with them not being uh, bitten by insects. <laughs> <laughs> he's really trying to get that rock out of the bottom. of the. We put a toy in there um, that looks like a fake rock and it's plastic and it's sunk now. And he's really trying to get that toy out of there. And I'm sure if Brutus was not chewing on his ice treat that he would come help him pull that out. But as you can see, he's probably not gonna climb all the way in that pool. He'll get his front legs wet and his mouth wet, but not his full body. Do they come out even in the winter? They do come out in the winter. So as long as it's above uh, 10 degrees real feel, they're able to come in and out of their holding, which is set at around 70 degrees. So they can stay inside and be warm. They could go out in that cave and be warm or they can choose to come out and stretch their legs and get some fresh air for short periods of time. So generally, most, they're probably only inside for about 30 to 45 days a year. So they're still pretty young. They're very young. Okay. Yeah. So they probably were hoping that they would live to be at least another 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. So do they do they still sleep the 20 hours a day like? like uh, full grown lions would? They sleep a little less than that uh, because they are younger and they're still, they like to play quite a bit. Uh, and we feed them twice a day, so they um, don't need to sleep quite as much. They probably sleep around 16 hours a day right now. And where's their favorite spot to hang out? They generally like on the back wall to the right, there's a big shady uh, set of rock works that go up the side of the exhibit. 
they're generally spending a lot of time uh, on that back area or to the right. Um, where Titus is standing, there's a rock right behind him that uh, he likes to lay on sometimes as well. So they generally um, sometimes lay on the mound in the middle, Brutus does sometimes, but mostly they're laying on the rock and they follow the shade if it's cold and the sun if it's warm. Yeah, I would I'm sorry, the shade if it's warm and the sun if it's cold. <laughs> I would say most times I, I come past, if they're not up and active, I do see them on that back shelf yep. quite a bit. Yep, and they're generally laying right next to each other. Um, and let's do one more question. Okay. Uh, what is their favorite treat? Oh, their favorite treat are their big meaty bones that they get on Sundays. And so on Sundays we give them these huge bones that have lots and lots of meat on them and they get, uh, I gave them four yesterday actually. And so that is their favorite um, food item. It is very close, obviously. It is basically a carcass. It's part of a leg and it's their favorite uh, treat that they get. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you had a great time seeing Brutus and Titus. They're, they're doing really well at the zoo. They're really uh, making a home here. They're lo we're loving having them. We're so excited to get them. We can't wait for you to see them when we reopen. We appreciate all the support and we hope to see you every day here at Facebook Live until we're able to open and we hope you have a great day.